<gasps> My goodness, who do we have here then? A little barbarian warrioress. Uh huh. I sense great anger in you. Could it be that the thirst for battle sits in this little chest? Uh huh. Then let me give you some advice. Swallow it. The most successful battle is the one that doesn't have to be fought. So be a good little barbarian warrioress and take a nap. Lilligrim could hardly believe her ears. Wasn't this a fantasy role-playing game? What fun was there in imagining aimlessly sitting around a campfire? Lilligrim didn't dream of listening to the soothing advice of the mysterious NPC. If anything, it just made her angrier. Too bad that she had to stop herself from losing control. She would have loved to have screamed this dope's head off. Um... Don't start me like that! Can't you see I'm watching the kettle? Um... The goblins are keeping quiet. Maybe too quiet. What could the goblins be planning? Why did they submerge one of the kingdom's greatest memorials underwater? Something similar happened to me once. But that was an accident. But I don't really think that the Royal Loo can be considered a memorial. Um... If you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm brewing a diabolical magic potion, of course. Well, it's actually a calming tea. I really wanted to conjure some coffee demons, but they don't let you get any sleep. And we do need our strength for the battle. Now I have to watch the kettle before it starts to whistle. The traveler has such sensitive ears. <coughs> Please don't yawn so much around here. Don't you know how contagious that is? And I have to watch the kettle. Oh, if you're staying up anyway, do you think you can watch the kettle? Uh-huh. Oh, great. Then I can finally get some sleep. As you know, we need our strength for... Oh, oh, for the... <sighs> Hello, Lilligrim. You're still up? You should get some rest. I'll keep guard and make sure the fire doesn't go out. <laughs> Don't look so grim. Your thirst for action is honorable. But the mysterious traveler is right. Strength. Lies and tranquility. Lilligrim felt like screaming at the brave Sir Drogalot. She hadn't traveled all the way to Goblin Gorge just to sleep. But something kept her from losing her temper. Fuming, she turned away from her companion. Her eyes fell on the quiet traveler who had listened to the entire conversation. Was that a smile she saw beneath the hood? I know what you want to say. You're here to fight. Not to sleep, right? Maybe tonight we should. Remain calm and gather our strength. That's what you wanted to say, right? <sighs> the Traveler is right. Acting in haste is never a good idea. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sure the goblins won't attack us tonight. They're guarding their reservoir dam in the gorge. But I do wonder what their plans are, damming up the Pink River and flooding the Valley of Unpleasant Memories. Why? It's all very mysterious. <sighs> are you as tired as I am? Uh -huh. 
Hello, Lily Grin. Would you like to be amused by my funny pranks? Then watch me. And are you amused? Um. Yes. It doesn't just look like it. I am actually juggling only one ball, and I know how ridiculous that must seem. My character sheet said that I... <clears throat> I, the comical Snipple, have the marvelous ability to juggle 55 balls at once. But as much as I would have liked to imagine what such a thing would look like, the mysterious traveler thought I should just juggle one ball instead, because it's much more contemplative. And as long as my shame or boredom doesn't cause me to spontaneously combust, then I'll stick to that. If you have a better suggestion... You think I should try it without any ball? Bravo! You found the only way to increase my boredom even more. On the other hand, if I juggle without a ball, I might be able to take a quick nap. No one seems to object to sleeping around here. Uh -huh. Well, well. Is that the legendary army of Hoth Mortigal? A little girl with brain? <laughs> Fabulous. Oh, why so angry, little girl? You're not here to declare war, are you? It would almost make a pleasant distraction, putting your feet up and drinking tea all the time. In the long run, it's not good for my goblin army. But why should I sound the horn for battle? My scouts told me about your lazy companions. You can't possibly think you can defeat my army with those dopes. I hardly think so. As long as we are not being attacked, I'll stick to the advice of this friendly traveler. Wait and see and drink tea. <gasps> Lilligrim was boiling with rage. She was very close to throwing a tantrum, but something was holding her back. The hooded figure sat silently at the campfire. Strange. I can't remember him being in the adventure. Which source book does he come from? You see a large cauldron. Roll for perception. You discover a safety valve. Good! The ball was stuck. But the pressure in the cauldron still wasn't enough for something to happen. You try putting the logs on the fire. Roll for sneak and hide so Sadrugalot doesn't wake up. Done! The logs were in the fire. Good child, what are you doing? This noise can't possibly be good for the group harmony. Without wanting to rush you, maybe now is the time for controlled, well-considered action. If you proceed with the required calm, I'm sure you'll be able to defuse the situation before there's a disaster. Uh-uh. I really must insist. But that's to arms! They've declared war on us! Sound the horn! <laughs> Enough! 
I can't take it anymore. This noise is driving me crazy. I'm losing control. To all. Finally, the fun part of the role-playing game began. The group stormed the battlefield with no restraint. They were led by Lily Queen, who furiously swung her berserker sword in circles. And as the dice rolled in the institution, so did the heads of goblins and hawk monitor. It seems it is a good idea to occasionally vent your rage. It was a short battle. The goblins were powerless against the fury unleashed by the group. The plans of the Goblin King were thwarted. Lilligrim found the defeated monarch cowering beneath one of the support beams of the dam. Lily. Poor foolish Lily. That was a terrible mistake. Lilligrim was still wondering what he meant. When she heard an ominous crack above her, When the pink floods had subsided, our heroes were faced with an incredible sight. The Valley of Unpleasant Memories. Will you look at that? I have to admit, I'm really blown away. We shouldn't be here. Ha! <laughs> You've always been quite the comedian, Snippo. No, I mean it. This valley is cursed. I heard that. Wait a second. Lily? What's wrong with her? Imagine how she felt at that moment. You can't? Oh well. Who knows what really goes on in the mind of a little girl. Do you feel alright, little girl? <coughs> little girl! Hello? Mm, uh, are you okay? I was worried, you know? Am I crazy, or did it just get colder in here? <laughs> the door was firmly locked. So depressing. I'm supposed to award experience points to improve a talent. Expressive dance, making music, lock picking. I don't actually want to be able to do any of those things. Isn't there a talent such as accepting one's fate? Or assigning experience points without experiencing an existential crisis? Peter's dithering made Lily furious. Couldn't the notorious whiner make even the most basic decisions? Lily would have liked to smack him across the face, but something held her back. I'll just increase pick locks, and that's it. There. Why don't you just hold on to the character sheet? I don't want anything to do with it anymore. <laughs> the 
The door was It sounded crazy, but she now actually had the skill to pick locks. Done. The gate was open. She wondered if... It was true. She'd opened the real gate during her trance. The path to the asylum's tower was now free. Somewhere in the dark uncertainty, there she would find her friend. Without really thinking about it, Lily took the stuffed rabbit with her. If she was going to enter Dr. Marcel's realm, she didn't want to do it alone, like she usually did. 